Today we got something pretty exciting that actually comes directly from Nintendo in regards to a potential feature for the Nintendo Switch 2, or at least something we know Nintendo has been playing around with that is not currently compatible with the current Switch. Now before we dive into that, sure, I could tell you about subscribing to the channel and dropping a like if you're enjoying the content. That's important, but I also want to make sure that we provide an update on yesterday's video where we talked about a big leak coming from Pioro, who does leak stuff for Nintendo. And there was all this speculation surrounding that he could be quite cryptic at times and quite literal at times. And it seems that he was pretty literal, but it might not be exactly what we think now let's dive in and see what that leak was because it was announced by nintendo and it is well the nintendo world championship nes edition it was rated by the esrb and if we read the summary here it says this is a collection of 2d challenges and platformer games in which players traverse through various modes speed run survival several challenges involve reaching specific points while others prompt players to defeat small enemies or survive brief battles some games depict pixelated characters using small swords or arrows to strike at enemies enemies typically get stunned and disappear in a flash now we all know what the at this point the nintendo world championships were back in 1990 so it will be kind of fascinating since i've never gotten to go hands-on with this to try it out the funny thing is according to necro felipe it is 30 dollars. it is a 30 dollar nes game i think that's a, a a bit of a steep ask but there's something interesting with this beyond the esrb rating because pioro's over here saying this is literally the nintendo world championship nes edition but then when you scroll down Someone says, so this is just a port of this then. And he said, no. He said, no, it's not just a port. So what does that, what, what, what does that mean? Is it been like visually enhanced? Is there um, something that's outside of the ESRB thing? Because to me, the ESRB thing seemed pretty samey, samey. I mean, if you're going to argue it's not a port, it would be that to switch the timings and all that would obviously be in the game, not physically on the cartridge like it was back in 1990. But I don't know. I just find that to be fascinating. I wanted to make sure I updated you on that story. So Pioro this time was being quite literal. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the actual reason you're here. What is this new supposed feature for potentially the Switch 2, or at least something we know Nintendo's been working on? Well, Endless Ocean Luminous came out this week, and that's already, you know, just a, a win for some people. I know it's not reviewing well, but there are people that will enjoy the game. Here's the thing. That game runs on a game engine, right? Every game runs on a game engine, and the engine it uses is the Nintendo Wear Bezel Engine. Now, this isn't a new engine. It is an internally developed engine by Nintendo, and it is used in other Nintendo games like the WarioWare games on Switch, and both Mario Parties on Switch are also using this engine. So while it's not been used in some of their you know, big, big major titles. It's been used in titles that have sold over 10 million. So that means that it's an engine that Nintendo does care to use and will probably bring forward to the next platform. Well, Endless Ocean Luminous turns out that it's using the most recent version of it and it contains some brand new features. So we're gonna head over to X to Oatmeal Dome, who is a data miner and go over this information because this feature is pretty fascinating to me. It says the latest version of the engine appears to support higher frame rates like 240 frames per second the switch can only output 60 and it can only output 60 in docked and handheld this only applies to games that enable variable frame rate mode not sure if the older engine versions also support this and here you can see in the code base uh, frame rate mode is in fixed mode at 30 fps that's what endless ocean runs at but you'll see that there is a variable frame rate minimum 10 max 240 and then a variable frame rate max limit enabled and that's at the false because they're not using the variable frame rate and then he goes on to say endless ocean luminous uses a new version of the bezel engine uh and thinking water loon for or water tune for noticing that uh where the mode was found past bezel engine games included the warrior titles on switch both mario party titles tetris 99 and a few third parties that have licensed it i should really note that, that just because the engine supports it doesn't mean that it'll be used in actual games but it is fascinating of course that nintendo themselves is messing around with 240 frames per second or at least higher than 60 frames per second because it's been widely believed nintendo doesn't care about this stuff and the current switch can't even do it so why would they be messing around with it now look there's a couple of theories of course the prevalent theory when you see 240 frames is oh nintendo's gonna bring their games to pc well 
Shintaro Furukawa recently talked about in investors meetings how Nintendo believes in the marriage of software to games and that that's what makes their stuff so good. And look, because of that, I really don't think this means Nintendo's about to bring some of their games to PC, even though 240 hertz pretty much is only supported really in the PC space. But what I do think this does mean is Nintendo has been messing around with higher frame rates. And it is possible that in docked mode, I don't think in handheld, but in docked mode, the Nintendo Switch 2 could support, well, higher frame rates. Now, you might go, well, why does that even matter? The PlayStation 4 is struggling to get 60 FPS at 4K and even upscaled 4K. Yes, I get that, but there are some smaller games that not only are 8K, there are smaller games that are 120 frames per second because that is something PlayStation 5 is able to do. And if Nintendo's been messing around with higher frame rates, it's entirely possible they may allow it in docked mode just to exist, and then if the developers can take advantage of it, cool. Whether it's 120 on uh, on a TV, which is, you know, some TVs do support 120, or even if you're getting it into people who are using monitors and needing to or wanting to use 200 plus frames per second. Obviously, the ability to do this would only be applied to smaller games or even Nintendo if they're experimenting with it. Maybe they experimented with it with Mario Party or maybe they experimented with like a side-scrolling Kirby game, perhaps. So there are some opportunities for certain Nintendo games to go higher than 60 frames per second, that's for sure. So that, to me, is really fascinating. We talk about something that we maybe didn't expect, one, Nintendo to mess around with, and two, let alone make it into a system. Now, remember, of course, we're speculating that they might allow higher than 60 frames per second in docked mode with Switch 2, because, again, the platform's not even announced yet, uh, officially announced yet. It, it is confirmed to exist. A platform is confirmed to exist by Nintendo, but, you know, what the form factor and everything isn't official. So, uh, but presuming that Nintendo's been messing around with it, well, the only reason they mess around with it is because they thought maybe it would be useful in something. And this is an engine specifically built internally by Nintendo. It does at least hint towards the possibility that Nintendo might be considering higher frame rates on the Nintendo Switch 2 for games that, well, want to have it. A lot of indie games could easily support higher than 60 frames per second, as an example. So there's some use cases here in very specific situations where they could allow this. And allowing higher than 60 FPS isn't like a massive cost to the system. This isn't something that's going to make the system be more expensive. So it literally can be done with the current HDMI specs and everything. So we'll just have to see what happens with this. Also, if it's using variable refresh rate, which is not what it says, this is variable frame rate, it could be a different version. Variable refresh rate VRR has to also be supported, not just on the system, but it has to be supported on the actual monitor side. Most TVs do not support variable refresh rate. There's a lot of monitors that do, however, so if they want to consider that for that, and you might be wondering, well, what's the big deal with VRR? What's the big deal with this in general? Higher frame rates, for those that might not be aware, maybe you've never experienced like PC gaming and, and gone beyond 60 frames per second. It just creates a smoother gameplay experience. That's really what high frame rates is about. When people tell you that they are not happy with 30 frames per second in something like, well, thousand year door it's because they're used to playing every game at 60 or above it literally is want not about what you see on screen what you see visually when you watch footage thousand year door it looks fine it's about what it feels because when you're with your controller here like this pro controller and you're hitting your buttons the high frame rates are all about the response rate and the smoothness of the gameplay that is a combination of how you're controlling the game versus what you're seeing and so it's very hard to convey over a video so absolutely i think thousand year door looks great but i can understand why 30 frames per second in that game if you're used to 60 or above could be quite jarring now if you only play nintendo switch games Look, we've been playing a lot of games at 30 frames per second, so it probably won't be that jarring, and that's probably why it's 30 frames per second, in addition to other development reasons. But I do think that it's fascinating that we're, we're having that debate, and people will be mad about that. Meanwhile, here's Nintendo being like, oh, by the way, one of our engines can support up to 240 frames per second. And by the way, might even support a variable frame rate thing, and a variable frame rate, how VRR does, is it helps with the... Um, jitter that you feel when frame rates massively drop. So one downfall of, of having really high frame rates is when you're playing a game, if you're running around a world or whatever and you're getting like 140 FPS on a 144 hertz screen and all of a sudden you, you spin the camera and it drops to 80 FPS, you actually will notice what's called like a little bit of gameplay jitter. It'll almost feel like the game hitched, even though people just watching the game that aren't controlling it might not see that hitch 
you'll feel it in the gameplay. Variable refresh rate helps deal with that issue um, and, and and help that be a much smoother transition, as it were, hence the variable refresh rate stuff, by changing the refresh rate of your monitor rapidly uh, to avoid that problem. That's obviously something that's very unique to variable refresh rate, and it's not in most TVs, but they didn't say this is VRR. Again, they're saying that this is a variable frame rate. It could be a just very different version of this, or it could just be nothing at all, and it just could be allowing the game to run at a minimum of this and a maximum of that, and it doesn't actually affect the refresh rate of your TV. So I don't know, guys. This is just obviously something Nintendo has worked on, a fact-based thing. What ends up coming from it, if anything, is obviously left up to, well, Nintendo technically, but also for today, left up to our own speculation. So let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Are you happy that Nintendo's at least messing around with higher frame rates, at least experimenting with it? Uh, I think that happens to be pretty fascinating, even if we found out because of Endless Ocean Luminous, a game that can't take advantage of any of that stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.